Hi everyone and welcome to my review of the Apple Airport Extreme Wireless Base Station. Uh, this base station does not actually come with a modem so some people in the UK and in the US and everywhere else in the world in fact may need to buy a modem for this which makes it quite an expensive option considering it's already £145 on the Apple Store. Okay, to start with, this is a simultaneous dual band wireless router. Um, so the simultaneous dual band means that it's got two radios in there, both working on the wireless end network. One working at 2.4 gigahertz and one working at 5 gigahertz uh, with newer computer equipment such as the MacBook Pro. Uh, let's that use up to 450 megabits per second with less interference uh, and a slightly extended range. If you connect, say, an iPhone to it, you're going to be getting about 65 megabits a second, which sounds bad, but it offers very good range and also I don't see anything wrong with 65 megabits. For starters, first impressions are that this router is very well built. It doesn't creak like the normal plastic sort of uh, router you'll get uh, nowadays, which are very cheaply made. This one uh, makes literally no noise when you try and bend it at all. I'm not sure if that's what you usually do. However, you can tell when you move something cheaper. It makes that sort of noise, and that's my Dell monitor there. Okay, so around the back we have the AC power input, which we have an AC power brick as well. Uh, this is obviously a DC input, sorry. USB port lets you plug in any device such as a hard drive. You can actually plug in a four port hub, up to four port. It must also be powered. Um, but you can plug in up to four devices if you've got a hub, which is uh, something you don't see on many routers now. Anyway, there is the WAN port, meaning that you do only get three gigabit Ethernet ports, but they are 1000 megabits a second. Okay, there's a reset button, which is actually much easier just to unplug that, plug it back in. Uh, and a Kensington lock port, which can be useful in some environments. Okay, so one thing I mentioned in my unboxing was this this ridge that's cut into the side all the way around, and it actually helps with heat dissipation, as you can see up there. Uh, it actually lets heat come out of the top, and considering heat rises anyway, it does let a fair few bit of heat out. Although this router does get hotter than most that I've owned. Uh, it's no worries really, um, because it's not needed to reboot or anything because of heat it has actually performed much better than any other route that I've owned so far. Okay so what you can see here is the airport hooked up to three Ethernet just behind here one being the Draytech modem which is right here uh, which works excellently with this by the way and uh, if I just plug this in in the back it should start to power up the airport usually powers up very quickly so that when you need to restart the modem if you're changing these settings things like games don't even have to drop out sometimes because it manages to restart in time before the connection is timed out uh, and the Draytech modem which uh, has never needed a restart so far um, has never actually dropped out so this really does provide an excellent connection to the internet that's very reliable and uh, consistent speeds all around as I mentioned before, the gigabit ethernet ports in this uh, are very very fast. They perform 1000 megabits a second and uh, file transfer speeds do reach very close to that very fast uh, maximum speed. My favourite feature of the Airport Extreme is definitely the speeds that it offers to wireless devices. So wireless devices using a 2.4 gigahertz band will only be able to get a slower speed uh, up to 300 megabits a second usually around 150 uh, and the 5 gigahertz band uh, users such as this MacBook uh, are enabled to 450 megabits per second which is very very fast for Wi-Fi speeds in fact it's probably faster than most people's Ethernet at the moment which is around 100 megabits a second I just want to demonstrate these speeds using my Storer which is attached using Gigabit Ethernet to the Airport Extreme and obviously I'm using Wi-Fi right now um, over the 5 gigahertz band which is usually synced around 390 to 450 megabits per second. And that shows you an 80 megabit file transferring in around 5 seconds. The actual throughput speeds that I've measured are very close to the 400 megabits per second mark and uh, I can definitely say that transferring files across here including watching large HD movies from any device connected to the network has been no problem whatsoever. 
Using the Ethernet connection you get an even faster speed up to 1000 megabits per second and the speeds do pretty much double from the Wi-Fi speeds offering about 800 megabits per second throughput. Another great feature of the Airport Extreme is the USB port that is in there. Uh, I've plugged a normal Western Digital um, external hard drive in and I'll just turn that on right now. As you can see here I've used the external hard drive as a backup disk and it also lets Windows and OS 10 computers back up wirelessly which is great uh, and this does that every uh, 10 minutes or so um, depending on what your settings are in time capsule or time machine preferences. My final thoughts on the Airport Extreme are definitely ones uh, that are very good. I find the Airport uh, probably the most reliable router I've ever used and probably the most reliable consumer router you can possibly buy at the minute. Because it's so well built and uh, I think everything inside seems quite solid, it does offer a much higher reliability than any other Belkin or Netgear that I've ever used. Uh, and it also offers faster speeds and faster throughput even even faster than ones that are claimed to be just as fast over gigabit ethernet and over the Wi-Fi. Um, however, I've never actually owned another wireless router that claims to be able to go 450 megabits per second over the 5 gigahertz band. Also, the simultaneous dual band is a very useful feature. It provides the Airport Extreme with an amazing figure of 750 megabits per second over the Wi-Fi. Considering the 2.4 gigahertz band and 5 gigahertz band can be running at full speed, though a device cannot be connected to both bands at the same time. I really do like the simple light on the front, which is quite bright, so if it's in your bedroom you will be able to see it at night. It does light up the room quite a bit. However, it's not too annoying and it doesn't flicker unless you set that option. The design of the machine is definitely one to be admired. It is probably the nicest router that I've ever seen. Uh, and it's definitely something you just think that's exactly how the router should look like. It is a very small box that can be placed anywhere and there's no external antennas to have to worry about positioning. The Airport Extreme managed to keep itself cool with just this small rim around here, although it does run slightly hotter than I'd have expected but that is definitely no problem because it's never had to shut off because of um, high heat. Around the back I'll just quickly mention the fact that these Ethernet uh, ports do have lights in them. There is a light just there at the top right of each Ethernet port signalling activity. Uh, you can't actually see them very well uh, so I would have preferred them to be placed uh, maybe underneath this little rim at the front. Overall this is the only router I've used and actually kept and felt happy with. It has provided me with a fast, reliable internet connection over Wi-Fi and over Ethernet. Overall, I'd rate this uh, router very highly, and I can't recommend another router like I can this one.